Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And this entire channel is dedicated to helping people get education and empowered to learning what to do that's right and try to avoid things that are wrong. And we're at the end of 2021. This might be at a perfect time to kind of review some of the worst things, some of the worst trends that we've seen in the last year. So let's break it down into three top negative trends and things that I kind of wish that our industry would, uh, would avoid putting out for people. And number one is the overfilled face, um, use of fillers to try to replace surgical procedures. Number two, the cat eye or the fox eye procedure and number three the thread lift and the resurrection of that procedure after years of knowing that it isn't exactly the best technique for facial rejuvenation so let's break it down let's look at these things in depth one by one and uh, and have a little bit of deeper understanding so that you can avoid some of these different types of trends that might pop up in 2022 how to think about the aging process and how to avoid them as they come along so number one the overfilled face so basically we've replaced the windswept over pulled look or the surgical look that people have as a result of uh, poorly done traditional facelifts with a, a new look which is related to overfilling the face to try to compensate the laxity that occurs. These uh, terms are non-surgical facelift, there's the um, jawline contouring, all these different um, things that are out there. And, and the fact that we have greater uh, variety of, of fillers allows uh, practitioners to use these in different ways, which sometimes isn't always exactly the best idea. And you can see that because what ends up happening is the individual that has laxity along the jawline, the cheeks are starting to fall down and you're starting to get a little jolly here. So the typical approach with that is the use of fillers to augment the jawline putting a bunch of filler down in this area along the angle of the mandible. The jowl exists down here in the middle of the, the jawline, and then you have a depression right in front of it, and then you put some more filler here. So the idea would be to straighten out the jawline. Now, when you look at the person on profile, sure, the jawline looks straighter, looks better. And most of the images that you see out on the internet, Instagram, et cetera, are showing that profile photo. But then when you look at the person in the front view, they have this type of an effect. They get really wide along the jawline and very heavy along the jawline. I can't I cannot tell you how many patients we've had over the years who've had to come in and have those uh, fillers removed along the jawline from jawline contouring procedures that were done um, in cases where people had a little bit more than mild to moderate level of laxity along their jawline. Now, many approaches are to fill the upper face very practical uh, physics idea, right? It's, it's the concept of displacement. You're gonna put volume up here, you're gonna fill this region up, and as a result, it's gonna displace and move the jawline upward, and you're gonna get this resolution of the laxity that you see here by overfilling the area of the cheek. Well, the bad news is that just doesn't work. What ends up happening is you just get these massive overfilled looking cheeks, and you get this consequently overfilled looking jawline, and then you end up looking like a big square. Some approaches will do one or the other. So if you do the uh, the jawline work only, you end up looking like a, a triangle. If you do the um, upper face, facial work, the, uh, the outer cheeks and the temple area, you end up looking like an upside down triangle. And if you do both of them together, you end up looking like a square. So there's no real um, good answer when it comes to these type of things. Generally speaking, the simple principle to go by is this. If you have laxity, which happens with age inevitably to everyone, you're gonna need a vertically oriented facelift. I perform a technique that I developed called the Vertical Restore, which literally brings all the soft tissues of the neck, jawline, mid face, and lateral brow all up together. Other surgeons you may be able to find have techniques that are you know, similar in terms of the, the, the directionality or the vector, but the vertically oriented approach is extremely important when you're talking about creating a natural look because once you create a natural look and you do it surgically using a deep plane and all these other kind of advanced techniques, well, you're basically, you're gonna get the, the result you're looking for, a very natural, you know, beautiful facial rejuvenation without looking like you've had anything done. The problem is still to this day, 95% or more of, uh, facelifts are done in the horizontal direction, the traditional uh, technique where the face gets pulled sideways. And you know who could blame anyone for not wanting that type of an outcome when they look like they've gone through either a wind tunnel or they've been kind of flattened and, and, and uh, pulled. So it, it's all in the technique, but 
approaching non-surgical with fillers is never going to be the answer. Remember, fillers are used to replace volume, which certainly happens as a part of the aging process, but volume needs to be um, corrected for its own sake, not for an approach to correct laxity. That's the rule of thumb. Laxity is corrected with surgery, volume is corrected with volume. In my practice, I use fat transfer. Some people don't have that at their, at their disposal, so they use fillers, but use fillers in a moderate way to replace volume. That's as blunt and as straight as I could put it, but it's extremely important you understand that to keep yourself out of trouble and avoid that uh, overfill phase. But that has been a massive trend that has been happening during uh, 2021 and actually even beyond um, in, you know, earlier to this time. So let's talk about the second trend, the cat eye procedure or the fox eye procedure. Same thing, just different animals to describe the procedure. So basically it comes down to this. Someone out there, a celebrity supermodel, ends up getting a procedure which lifts the corners of the brow, lifts the eye and looks attractive on that individual. The concept blows up and goes viral on social media. Next thing you know, everyone wants to have that type of a procedure done. Now, the term that was attached to it was the cat eye or fox eye procedure. Now, as a basic, simple foundation. Number one, humans are not meant to look like cats or foxes. We have our own sort of facial proportion, our own balance, and the last thing we want is for the, for the eye shape to go so extreme beyond what our natural eye shape is that all of a sudden we have something that resembles that of a different, completely different mammalian um, you know, species. It might work for some people, generally speaking, it doesn't work. And what really is concerning about it is that there are surgeries that are assigned to correcting um, you know, or manipulating the facial feature to treat and create that problem. And when you do that, you know, you're doing surgery to lift the corner of the brow so extreme to create that tilt and oftentimes making a small incision uh, in the corners of the eye, detaching the ligaments of the eyes which actually are the ones that your, your eyelid are used to blink, detaching them and, and bringing them up higher to create more of a slant. Now, surgery is permanent. It's not something you could try and see if it fits and if you don't like it, then you can reverse it. Once you have the surgery, it's, it's there for good. So be careful about the things that you do trend-wise with permanent procedures like surgery because you could literally regret it and not have anything to do about it. And that's what happens, unfortunately, with a lot of these surgically-based trends. And the cat eye and fox eye procedure is one that I'm strongly opposed to because the number of people that will actually benefit from such a procedure are very limited and the number of people who desire it based on other people's outcomes is extreme. So be very, very cognizant of that aspect. Not to mention the surgery has a number of different risks and issues associated with it. I did an entire video on the concept of the cat eye and the, and the uh, fox eye procedure. In fact, I did an entire video on the use of filler and surgery and how to decide between them and you can watch those next on the channel. Those are topics that I've talked about in the past and made full videos on it to give you full information about it. Non-surgical approaches to lift this, you know, if you want to put a little Botox here to see if your brow lifts a little bit and it looks okay, I have no problem with that. That's temporary, a few months. Even the thread lift, you know, if you don't mind spending a little extra money and taking some risk of infection and, and issues that are associated with threads, which I personally wouldn't advise, if you want to try at least it's temporary, but surgical approaches to create those issues are big no-nos in my opinion. The third and final not so great trend of 2021, thread lifts. What I just mentioned a second ago for the cat eye procedure. So here's how the story of the thread lift works. And again, I did an entire video on this topic as well. You can watch it after this video. But the thread lift, you know, when I was starting out in my um, surgical training, in my residency and fellowship, it was just starting to come out. We're talking about nearly 20 years ago. At the time, they were using non-absorbable barb sutures. They would place it through one part of the skin, bring it out to here, and then literally hike the face up and the, the soft tissue of the face would catch on the barbs and as a result, hold the face up. Seems like a relatively clever, good idea, right? Well, what ended up happening was those barbs ended up hurting people so much. I mean, the physical sensation of the barbs against the underside of the skin hurt a lot. So people were under a lot of pain. And then what ended up happening is you bring all this up and you get this massive amount of bunching right here. So the people were walking around with pleats in their faces, not such a good issue either. And then by the time all of the pain started to resolve, it would usually be about six to eight weeks it would resolve. But by resolution, it meant that the face had already come back down. You're basically back to square one. So it made a hot start, a very, very hot start um, back in uh, early 2000s. And then it died immediately. The company was actually called 
contour thread lifts. It went bankrupt, and as a result, the community was safe for about 10 years. And then what ended up happening is um, 10, 15 years later, they come up with a, with a new concept. Instead of using a, a non-absorbable suture, which by the way, makes actual surgery so much more difficult because I have to work around these sutures and cut them and remove them, etc. They came up with the concept of a absorbable suture using PDO, which is a dissolvable material. So the idea here is that you're putting a PDO thread into the face, hiking this up, and the mechanism which is holding it up is, is dissolvable. So when you think about it logically, how could something that's dissolvable hold the face up for long term? Well, the answer is pretty obvious, it's not going to. So people get three months, four months, maybe out of, out of the lift and then the thing ends up coming down. If that, most people who get it done see almost no change or no positive change, maybe by the time they even you know, leave the office and recover a little bit from the swelling, they're back to square one. I've done a lot of posts on my Instagram and a lot of videos on different social media outlets because I try to warn people that, you know what, money doesn't grow on trees. Most people desire these type of procedures. They save up for them. They're, they're hoping to get the kind of result that makes them look younger and, and um, you know, more natural, more youthful. But unfortunately, it just doesn't. This procedure fails to accomplish that. And so as a, as a result, people end up spending money. And then, Oftentimes they hear that they have to do this over and over and over again. They do it two, three, four times, um, you know, every six months or so just to kind of hold hold on to that, that change. But at the end, if it's not permanent, if it's not gonna give you long lasting changes, that's a lot of money. These things can cost anywhere from several thousand to six to 8,000, depending on the number of threads that are put in there. To do that repetitively over and over again, you've already paid for, you know, a, fa a surgical facial rejuvenation several times over by the time, you know, you're 10 years out if you go, go around this way. Thread lifts in general, I, I just find them to be, you know, just a, a failure of a concept um, and a uh, and a very short-term fix to a long-term problem that is actually advancing, right? I mean, the face is actually advancing with with age, so you're fighting a current that's moving faster than your techniques are. You're going to be in trouble, and that's why, you know, from a surgical point of view, I've actually advance my technique, you know, just after 10 years of doing it to a point where I can get even longer lasting results than I was getting with an already long lasting technique. And that's where the vertical restore technique was born. I mean, we're getting, you know, beautiful, natural, long lasting results in these, in these patients that could give somebody 10, 15 plus years of stability plus, you know, a lifetime of anti-aging because those tissues are now in a, in a much more, um, you know, durable position based on the surgery that we performed in the deep plane. So these are all things to keep in mind. These are just three and there's definitely, you know, more, there's a whole non-surgical energy techniques and all that kind of stuff, which, you know, has its own list of issues, but these are just three of the ones that have become very popular. And as a result, I thought we would highlight them at the end of the year. Things for you to know and to think about as you navigate the marketing hypes and the, and the different uh, social media posts and things like that so you can make good decisions for yourself. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be giving you guys lots and lots of topics like this and education um, and knowledge to help you stay safe and efficient out there. Follow my Instagram, which also has a ton of content. I post daily on my Instagram channel. Once a week or so, we will be posting here on YouTube um, every day on Instagram and, uh, and TikTok actually as well. So follow along, share this with friends and family who you think this would help and like it and comment. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to, uh, to get to the uh, questions that you may have. Thanks so much. I hope you all had a um, great holiday season and, and look forward to a great 2022. Thanks again for your attention. It's always my pleasure. Dr. Amir Karam.